Welcome to the Blender to Web 3D tutorial series. This is the first technical tutorial where we're going to get started in taking Blender assets and turning them into interactive 3D web pages. I am your floating head developer in the corner and we're going to jump straight into getting stuff done. So to start with, you're going to want to make sure you have Node.js installed. I'm not going to go through that in detail. You're going to want to have Visual Studio Code or something similar. And you're going to want to have an asset that you want to convert into a web page. Uh, I grabbed this from CG Trader. I thought it was fun. It's going to be challenging. And uh, you can work with anything that you like. It could be a creation of your own or something that you purchased. You should be able to follow along. And of course, we have Blender. To get started, we're going to open Blender with the asset that we want to work with. I'm going to skip through loading my asset. All right, I've got this asset loaded. And as you can see, I'm in a camera view. Take a look at the materials. You can see various lights. There's a whole lot going on in here. There's actually a box that surrounds the whole scene in order to get some special effects. I'm going to switch this back to a wireframe just to save some resources. And I'm going to go through the export process. First, let's go to the repository we're going to be working with. This is going to be github.com. Sudden development, web-3d-tutorial. Once you find this screen, you know you're in the right place. Go to code copy the repo URL. We're going to open a new window for Visual Studio Code. We're going to come over here to this uh, repository or source control icon, clone repository, put in the URL for the repo we're working with. And this repo is specifically designed for this tutorial and I will keep it going and updating as we go. Might get some new tools to help the Blender to Web 3D processes. So once we pick that, we have to pick a destination. I'm going to pick my lab directory and it's going to clone the repo name underneath that. So it'll be lab and then web-3d-tutorial. So I'm going to select that location. And yes, I would like to open what I just cloned. So from here, you can see we've got some files that are from the repo. Uh, these are created to make things as easy as possible based on my run through of this script. So hopefully it helps everybody. Uh, we will get into exactly what all this is in a minute, but for now, just keep in mind that we put all of our code into this SRC directory and we put our assets into the public directory. From Blender, let's export. We'll do file, export, GLB, GLTF. I want to uh, pick the public directory that I was just mentioning. And I wanna name it model. So it's gonna be model.glb under the public directory that we were just looking at. Now come over here to options before we do that. Let's make sure that we include all this data, the custom properties, cameras, and lights. They're not necessarily going to import nicely, but it's better to have them imported and remove them later than not imported at all. And then I like to come down to geometry and check compression and come up here and check your box for remember export settings so that you don't have to do that again. So go ahead and export. Now that it's exported, we should have a model.glb in the public directory here. And we are going to open a terminal, terminal, new terminal. I'm going to close the debug and then split this terminal into two windows. So from here, I'm going to need to gen use the glb to create a uh, JSX file. It's it's the stuff that looks like this that has everything divided into these tag looking components. 
it's going to do that with all of our assets exported from Blender. In order for it to do that, I need to run a command. So first I want to be in the SRC directory, so CD space SRC, all right? And then npx gltf jsx, and I'm going to point it to where our model.glb is. So that should do it. And it should run pretty quickly. It does some intelligent things. There are options that we can change for that command, but for now we're just going to run it as is. You can see here that it created a model.js and this is going to have your camera. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this to true. It's going to have your camera, all your lights, and all the different meshes, the materials, etc. that you had defined in, um, in your file, in your Blender file. So immediately you can see you know, that it converts everything over for you. It does a lot of intelligent things that we don't really need to understand right now. But one of the key things is that we need to go from a model, we need to replace this model.jsx with this model.js. So this is just the one that has the box. We don't need it anymore. So let's delete it. Now let's rename this one to .jsx. If you don't have JSX, it's just not going to work. That's a whole other thing. So now we have the model.jsx, it points to the model.glb, and it should already be pointed to from our, um, uh, from our website. But in order to get our web website running, I'm going to type in npm run dev. Oh, I need to do npm install. I'm going to do npm install. That's going to install all of the node requirements that are needed for this project. All right, and as, after that's done, we can do npm run dev. If everything works, then you should be given a website. So I'm gonna go ahead and close Blender real quick. Nah, don't save. And I'm going to command click on this to open up and see what we did. It's going to take a little bit. All right, and now we have a overlit mess. Um, but you can interact with it. Scroll, zoom, pan, all that kind of stuff. Just play around with your mouse on the screen. Now let's look at why everything is just uh, a giant ghost image. In the model.jsx that we had created, it brought in all of the lights at really high intensity. So 3JS is looking for a value from zero to one. And we've got some of these are values at like 2000. So what we want to do is go ahead and remove all of these spotlights. We can get into how to use the lights more intelligently later, but for now it's easier to just remove them. All right, I'm save it after we save, uh, remove those lights. You can see it does an update come back to our page and much better. Now I can actually see what's going on. Now that the lights are kind of resolved, you can tell immediately that we've got an issue with the materials. Some materials came in great, other materials came in partially, and then some materials didn't come in at all. We're going to cover that in another installment, but Still, we were able to very quickly go from a complex Blender project to a model on the web that's interactive and 3D. So let's take a little deeper dive into the file now and 
give you some things that you can play with before we stop for the next uh, the next video. All right, if you come to the model.jsx, or actually everything loads from the app.jsx, and you can see here that I have the ambient light. If we don't have this ambient light, so I'm going to go ahead and take this out, save it, it automatically updates. We're going to go back. There's just nothing to see. It has these emissive signs, but without lights, you're not going to see anything. Makes sense. That's the easiest light to start with, and we can play with spotlights and such in a later video when we focus on it. The orbit controls, that's what's going to let you do the, uh, the mouse, right click, left click, and middle click to pan, zoom, and uh, rotate. And if you remove the orbit controls, it's going to make you locked into a camera. So now I'm just locked into a camera. I can't move at all. This might work out well if you want to have animation paths for the camera based on clicks and different things that we interact with. And you want to control that experience. You don't want to just leave a free form experience with your model. But I'm going to go ahead and leave the orbit controls back in there. And that's really it for this file for now. We're going to add on to it later. And then we have the model.jsx. This is the file that we created. You can immediately see that we've got groups. These are like our collections. We have meshes and then we had uh, the camera and we had the point lights which were removed. We can mess with the point lights later, but the camera, it did come in, it worked, and you could see how I was uh, locked into it when I removed the orbit controls. Materials are something we can mess with later and swap just like their variables or modify them. And then the rest is come in as meshes. Because everything comes in with a name, you can immediately tell that if you want to be able to have control of these in code, then you're gonna to have to name them things that actually mean something when you're in Blender. Because anything you name it in Blender is going to come over and be named when you uh, bring it into the website. That's it for now. Come to the Discord and you know show me what you're working with. Let's explore things together. Tell me what direction you want to see stuff headed. I know that I have to cover the materials, the lights, animations, things like that. But anything else, let's talk about what you want to see. Again, that's in the Discord and it's also always good to check out the uh, the repo because this is going to get updated with scripts as we go maybe based on request all right thanks for joining and i hope this helped you out or you you enjoyed bringing your assets into the web and it motivates you to continue further